here it is, the most anticipated moment of this year's signing day. Marcus DeMarcus is going to make his decision. So this is a very difficult decision. I'd like to thank all the schools that recruited me. Um, but after giving it a lot of thought, talking over with my family, I'm gonna bring my talents to Juilliard. Welcome to Stage Center here on the worldwide leader in theater, Thespn. I'm Brad Joel. And I'm Rob Scott. We start with National Theater Signing Day when the nation's top high school drama prospects officially commit to the theater programs of their choice. Yesterday, Marcus DeMarcus out of Weston, Mass, stunned recruiters by choosing to take his buttery smooth baritone to the theater program at Juilliard with a minor in ballet. He's been a top prospect since he was 10 when he wowed the talent scouts in the role of Daddy Warbucks in the St. Julia Catholic School production of Annie Jr. Also generating buzz is Farmington High School senior Alyssa Schmidt, whose range garnered a lot of attention from her role in Alice in Alice in Wonderland. Schmidt expected to forego her college eligibility and directly enter the Actors' Equity Combine. All this amid controversy out of Springfield, Missouri, as Carthage High School senior Kenny Truffa had his scholarship to Mizzou revoked after testing positive for stage presence enhancing drugs. Following his Saturday night performance in Pinocchio, Truffa is expected to appeal the decision. With more, we have Jimmy Marlier. Jimmy, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. This is certainly a surprising development out of one of Mizzou's top prospects who, despite being under the influence of presence enhancing drugs, delivered a rather turgid and imprudent performance in his last show. In fact, by the beginning of the second act, he was downright sloppy. Right here is where Kenny Truffa blows his blocking. He's supposed to spin stage left, but instead spins stage right, colliding with actor Christopher Zerfus, who is forced to improvise an explanation. Later, after this crucial scene with Geppetto, Truffa is supposed to exit upstage, but, but instead, and I'll stop it right here, exits downstage and enters the audience. By the time he notices his mistake and tries to get back on stage, it's far too late. And when the company enters for the next big number, he's thrown off the entire formation. And, and just like that, the play is dead, and so is the scholarship. Thank you, Jimmy. Big opening night tonight of Hamlet at the Ethel Barrymore Theater in New York. The lead playing Hamlet, Randall McClaskey, reportedly has strained vocal cords. Could be a tough loss for the veteran actor who's coming off a Tony Award winning performance as Captain Von Trapp in The Sound of Music. Do you leave him in on opening night or do you put that in the hands of understudy Russell Kogelschatz? We go to the panel. Joining us today are entertainment blogger Trisha Baker from the New York Times and Philadelphia Inquirer culture reporter Stephen Flanagan. Stephen? Kogel Schatz is untested, and he lacks the confidence to carry Hamlet. He blew his lines last year in Rent. I wouldn't cast him as Yorick's skull. He should have been redshirted as Horatio for an entire season. No, no, it's opening night, but you gotta think long term for the entire run. Rest your lead and bring him back in five to seven days. Absolutely not! This is not the time to roll the dice. Leave McClaskey in and rest him later. These theater seasons are so short, if you bomb early in this season, there's no recovery. You can't blow opening night. The critics don't give redos. Clearly it's a tough call, but we know what you're all thinking. How does McClaskey's injury affect my Hamlet fantasy cast? We go now to Brett Miller and Chris Dugan. Thanks, Brad. For Hamlet, no doubt about it, I'm backstaging McClaskey. I'm gonna go with Alan James from the Soho Playground, which makes him my off-Broadway pick of the week. Here's a guy, tremendous stage combat skills, and probably one of the best to be or not to be monologues in the business. Claudius and Gertrude, they're a no-brainer. Helen Stanley and Tom Dwight have been top co-stars at the Steppenwolf Theater in Chicago since 05, when they were both acquired in a multi-theater trade with the Hippodrome Theater in Baltimore and the Philadelphia Shakespeare Theater. And in that trade, Steppenwolf only gave up a Laertes understudy and a six-round Fortinbras. Exactly. And there was some concern back in 05 that Tom Dwight's vocal cord nodules would return, especially after undergoing a season-ending injury in 04. But so far, that's proven to be a smart trade that's certainly paid off. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, I gotta go with Luis Gonzalez and Terry Molina out of San Pedro's Shakespeare by the Sea series. You gotta love the chemistry between these two really made you appreciate the first ambiguously gay duo. For the part of Ophelia, we have a deeper field than in recent years, but most say the top contenders are Jenna Koenig-Bauer, Kim McGinnis. 
Who do you play? Who do you backstage? In my mind, the top choice for Ophelia is Jenna Koenig Bauer. She got a three minute standing ovation after her performance in Portland's rendition of the Vagina Monologues. She spent four years in London at the Academy of Music and Dramatic Art, another six of live performance at the Globe Theater. She has a deep understanding of Ophelia's character and a totally banging rack. Kim McInnes, while she also would turn the head of any Dutch prince, is still just a little bit too green for me. So I'd pull her from the playbill this week. Brad, Scott, back to you. Thanks, Chris. And now it's time for our countdown of our top plays of the week. Number five, The Miracle Worker. Can you say water? Number four, The Crucible. You are a witch. Number three, The Importance of Being Earnest. We're getting wild now, Oscar wild. Number two, Death of a Salesman. Salesman might be dead, but this play is kicking. And number one, The Merchant of Venice. Oh! After Thursday's announcement of plans for Les Mis in Rochester, Michigan's Meadowbrook Hall, debate has sparked over Carpenter Ross Draval being named frontrunner to play Jean Valjean. Back to the panel, Stephen, Trisha, who do you cast? Ross Draval doesn't have the range to carry Valjean. With that high register, he'd make a better cassette. Ross Draval is a very promising talent. He was actually in prison for stealing a loaf of bread. You know he'll be emotionally attached to the role. That's ridiculous. You want a solid Valjean? I've got your Valjean, Bob Vidal. He teaches history at Harrison High School. He's got showmanship. Just ask the AP kids. He spends eight hours a day teaching the French Revolution. And by the way, he managed a Parisian brothel in the early 90s. The man gets the plight of Valjean and the struggle of Fantine. Thank you, Stephen and Tricia. Now let's move over to LA, where theatergoers were treated with a huge comeback performance of a chorus line at the Fox Performing Arts Center. We go live backstage with DSBN field reporter Rachel Murray with lead Colton Reynolds. Colton, you had a rough open tonight. How did you catch your stride in the second act? Yeah, Rachel, uh, we were sluggish there in the first act, but you know uh, we're, we're a second act cast, so I knew we were gonna pull off a strong performance. Uh, really got to give credit to Christiana. She came in, brought a lot of energy to the scene. So, you know, overall, I think it's a huge improvement over last year's performance of uh, that Scottish play. So tell me, how does uh, tonight's energy compare to last year's opening performance of Macbeth? No, 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 don't say Macbeth. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I hope he's okay. That, that looks serious. That looks very serious. But the real concern here is... Will it dethrone the reigning worst of the worst? For the past 16 weeks, the worst of the worst has been Broken Sword and Bullshot Crummin. Let's see the results of our viewer poll. And we have a new worst of the worst champion. When we return, we'll have the results from our live viewer poll on who was more influential to theater, Stephen Sondheim or Andrew Lloyd Webber. Stick around for more nonstop theater news right here on DSBN, your worldwide leader in theater. And scene.